Well, we're sure that you've watched with interest, as have we, the events going on the last month with the volcanic eruption in Iceland. We were sure surprised to hear about Grindavik and all of the 1% of the nation's population being displaced, moved Both. out of their homes yeah. because their town was wrecked by the earthquakes. The earthquakes affected the town of Grindavik and then the actual volcanic eruption fortunately was a few miles away. So we understand that uh, everyone was safe, but we do know there will be a lot of property damage and a lot of impact. It reminded us of just how beautiful and ferocious and wild Iceland really is. Last summer in 2022, we had the opportunity to visit Iceland for about 10 days. And so we'd like to share some of those beautiful waterfalls with you. Come join us for a trip to the land of fire and ice. this forward journey, we've gone to some place totally different, a really unique place of the world. Today we find ourselves with the ice in Iceland. Thanks to our son Tom, who's taken us on an excellent adventure around Scandinavia. This week we're spending in Iceland. Iceland is an island nation in the North Atlantic between Europe and North America. Iceland is more than twice the size of Denmark, or about the same size as the U.S. state of Kentucky. Iceland's landscape offers fjords, glaciers, mountains, waterfalls, volcanoes, lava fields, cold deserts, and tundra. Only about 20 to 25 percent of the island is habitable, and mostly along the southern and eastern coasts. The population of Iceland in the whole country is only 387,000 people, but they estimate in 2023 they had 2 million visitors. For this trip, we booked a tour with G Adventures that took us around the southern part of the island and showed us many of the highlights. We traveled on a 19-passenger tour bus, would travel to the sites and then do some hiking once we arrived at each different location. Iceland lies at the northern end of the Mid-Atlantic Range where the Eurasian tectonic plate meets the North American plate. And because of that, the island has a lot of volcanic activity. Here we got to visit the site or the area where those two plates meet. We are here on the Parliament Fields where in the 900 the people all met together in Iceland to make the rules and make their country. This is also the uh, National Park here and we're at the site of where the two uh, tectonic plates meet. The Eurasian Plate and the North American Plate they have created this rift. Uh, behind us, so pretty special. Because of that unique uh, geological formation, Iceland has 30 active volcanic systems. The most recent eruption happened on the 18th of December 2023 near the town of Grindavik. It was very fitting that one of the first stops on our tour was the lava center at Volvolir. Now, my pronunciation of Icelandic names may be rough, but this interactive museum was really neat to be able to see the history and the details about the geology of this island. Iceland is the largest island on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and it's been built up by rising magma with a powerful mantle plume and magma emerging between diverging tectonic plates. We are at a geothermal park. Not wanting to let that great geothermal energy go to waste, we stopped at a hot springs park where we got to experience hot springs baked bread. The dark rye bread is baked in a can or a pot placed down in the geothermal spring and it is served with a hard-boiled egg. It tasted great. We continued that first day of travel out of Reykjavik heading towards Skaftafell and we stopped at some magnificent waterfalls. Oh, cool. 
<laughs> All right, here we are at Skelfafell Falls. Not sure I'm saying it right, but we'll look it up. But uh, pretty incredible. It's uh, very neat. You walk behind the waterfalls and come up this little trail. It's slippery on the wet rocks, uh, but it's yeah, doable. It's doable. The falls across is 11 meters. You can see that. Quite wide. With all the glacial runoff, there were so many beautiful waterfalls to see in Iceland. get right up close and we were privileged to see a double rainbow at the base of the falls. Long staircase lets you climb to the top of the falls and here we were privileged to see that rainbow perspective again. But this wasn't the only beautiful waterfall with rainbows, there was more. We are at uh, one of the waterfalls here on what's called the Golden Circle just outside of Reykjavik. Uh, this is one of the main stops here. Uh, next we're gonna go see the geyser, but this is just a beautiful stepped uh, waterfall, uh, incredible behind us. And when the sun is right, you can see a rainbow here. It's uh, really beautiful. interesting waterfalls was called Haranfossar and here um, surface water and melting glacier water flow between two layers of lava and appear to come out of the side of the escarpment uh, instead of a traditional waterfall that flows over a cliff. Very beautiful. waterfall was called Svartavas. It is surrounded by uh, black columns of basalt uh, rock formed by the lava. Very unique and beautiful place that you can't see anywhere else but Iceland. We traveled between different locations and sightseeing stops. Often lunch was at a gas station restaurant. The food there was great, and we really started to fall in love with hot dogs with crunchy onions on top. highlights of our tour was the stop that we made at Diamond Beach and our tour of the Glacier Lagoon. I got my ice in the, in the uh, Diamond Beach. We call this Diamond Beach because the icebergs break up and little pieces of uh, the icebergs land here on the Black Sand Beach. So pretty cool. ice break off the glacier, become icebergs, and then float into the sea was amazing. But we were going to get to experience it on an even more significant level. We were about to get on a duck boat and get into that lagoon.
50% fresh water and 50% salt water. Fresh water from the glaciers, salt water from the ocean. It's the only lagoon in Iceland which has a connection to the Atlantic Ocean. And this has an impact on the temperature of the water. If you go near the glacier, it's only around 1 degree Celsius. Here is more around 5, and which means that in the southern part of the lagoon where we are, the water never freezes, even during the winter, due to the temperature and the salt. 100 years old, this one included. <laughs> and they detach from the glacier, they float on the lagoon for about 5 weeks before getting stranded near the coastline. They are melting quite quickly as in three months the biggest one you see will be completely gone. According to you, how much of the iceberg can we see from where we are? One third. One third? Ten percent. Ten percent. Ten percent? Well, it's actually only ten percent. <laughs> right. Ninety percent of it is on the water. We don't know its shape, we don't know its size, and that's why we don't get too close because we don't want to end up like, you know, uh, in this famous movie. But back to the iceberg, I think you're all wondering about why some are white and why some are blue. That's due to the melting of the iceberg, because when it's melting, there's part of the iceberg that break off. And so when that happened, the iceberg will turn over and tilt on the water to find a new balance. And this also implies that there's part of the iceberg which has been underwater until now that will come up to the surface. And this is what you see that is very blue. Because it's very pure, very dense ice without any oxygen in it as you can see on this one. So it absorbs all the color from light but the blue which is reflected and give it this clear, transparent, nice blue color. But once, this, once the blue part is up to the surface for more than 10-15 hours, it starts to melt, there's oxygen getting inside the ice, and so with the bubble, the blue ones become white. About the black color you see is mostly ashes from volcanic eruption, and also some sand and sediments, and sometimes you can see like stripes or layers of black color. That's because it's two different volcanic eruptions, and in between those two layers, it could have been hundreds of years as 20 meters of snow is needed to make only one centimeter of ice. Okay, here we are on our um, previous boat and we're um, riding among the icebergs in the glacier lagoon. If you look past me, you can see the largest glacier in Europe. Getting the perspective of the glacier from the Glacier Lagoon was impressive, and it got us excited about our next adventure. We were headed to Vatanukel, one of the large glaciers in Iceland, and Tom and I were going to hike on the ice. We were fitted with crampons for our feet, an ice pick and a helmet for safety, and a harness, and off we went. <laughs> okay. 20 years ago, uh, this pond didn't exist, and it was all glacier. In 2019, a team from Scotland and Ireland compared photographs of Vatnajökull in the 1980s with present-day images, and they've seen a staggering difference. The team hopes that the comparison photos will be used for public outreach to show how rapidly Iceland's glaciers are retreating. But the problem of glacier loss caused by climate change is a global issue and the resulting rise in sea level could have huge consequences for millions of people. The guide gave us lots of information, and we did have to walk for about 20 minutes to half an hour across land before we got to the point that we needed to strap on the crampons on our feet to head up onto the ice. Alright, here we are on the glacier. Uh, Tom's brought us to Iceland and we are exploring on a glacier. Uh, this one's about 450 years old, I think, this ice that we're standing on. Uh, and we are in the lower part of the glacier. We'll climb, climb up with our crampons just a little bit higher yet to go. One of the neat opportunities was the chance to drink the glacier water. Awesome, awesome.
sound a bit cliche, but hiking up the glacier with one of my sons was truly a mountaintop experience. From the glacier park, we headed to the coast. Here we are on the Black Sand Beach near Beak, and we learned that Beak is the only town on the mainland coast that um, practices regular evacuations in case the volcano erupts. That's right. Uh, there are seven volcanoes, so here's a little, a little oh, glimpse at the sneaker waves. They have a big sign here that says, look out for the sneaker waves, and we just about got sneakered and some of them obviously very serious, so you do have to pay attention if the weather is bad here, but uh, we're, in a, we're in a pretty safe zone, but you still have to scramble in case, uh, in case the waves come suddenly. big volcano underneath the glacier and so the town of Vik has to practice evacuation because the water would flood down uh, if that volcano erupts. Sam Beach, we headed up to the nearby cliff to get a view of the lighthouse and to see if we could spot a puffin on the cliffs. things we enjoyed about our tour was the chance to stop at several Icelandic farms and enjoy fresh farm-to-table food and learn about the unique agriculture and livestock in Iceland. Oh, thank you. Wow. This looks so nice. We're here at the Friedemeyer Greenhouse today and we got to come for tomato soup, lunch, and bread. And it was all you could eat of either one of those two things. And we even had tomato ice cream. It was awesome. You'll notice behind us the greenhouses and they grow almost 40% of Iceland's tomato market right here at this greenhouse. And they, it, was really a, it was really a great experience. They use the geothermal uh, natural sources of hot water to help heat the greenhouses uh, all year. Hello. We also got to visit sheep and horse farms, had great food, and they uh, were able to show us their unique Icelandic breeds of these animals. So these are Icelandic horses? Yeah. yeah. Um, you can these two the over here, they're only one year old. So they're still growing a little bit. We learned that Icelandic horses are different than the ones we're familiar with in North America. An Icelandic horse has five different gates. Usually we're familiar with horses that have three gates, walk, trot, and gallop. But the Icelandic horses also have two other smooth and desirable gates called tolt and flying pace. We are in Steikomar. I think I've said that right. We are on the Western Peninsula, and uh, this is just a beautiful city. This harbor 
uh, was named the prettiest harbor in Iceland, and I think they got it right. It's not just the harbor that's pretty. There's also several islands looking out into the ocean that are really close by. And, and I see that they have tours to take you to see the puffins. We already saw some of those and some fishing. There's also uh, the village here. The houses are really pretty colored. Uh, they've got corrugated tin to help uh, survive against the elements, but uh, really a picturesque uh, town here on the Western Peninsula. We hope you enjoyed this tour of Iceland. We had a fantastic time there and so appreciative to our son Tom for taking us on this journey. If you've been to Iceland, please share your comments below. Let others know what sites we missed. And if you like this video, please click subscribe and join us for more Forward Journey adventures.